this is the story uh, of the NLRB in Ithaca. All right. So another one, big news. A federal judge found that Starbucks illegally closed the College Avenue store in Ithaca, New York, and ordered that Starbucks immediately reopen it. Yep. Another win for workers. So, Which is legit. Reef and I had a bit of an argument on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is going to make a good like, story. You can't, like, you can't make businesses do stuff. Like, yes, you can. Like, well, you can and you, you can. You definitely can. You can and you no, can. No, you can. All right. Clearly you can. So my my what well, I can't get my head around is A, and we're gonna look into the story a little bit more, but they closed this store more than a year ago. So the real estate okay. has either been empty or they have sold this property likely to another buyer, which is now there. So are you kicking Aww. this company out of their yes. new digs that they've bought this building? Yes. And what are they supposed more to capitalists. do? Capitalists. It's not their fault. That they, it's not their fault that they bought a Starbucks that was that that fired oh, everyone. Well. All right. I mean, honestly, yes, I would say it was up to Starbucks. Starbucks needs to figure that out. You need to find us. Yeah, yeah, pay reprimands and like exactly. Well, they need to know. figure out how to how to reopen that spot that they illegally closed and made shut down. Probably left you know whoever they were already paying lease with. There was probably already something that went down with that. Regardless, so I mean. I do think, you know, they might find a way to figure out however that might go, especially since it was, I, I thought you said it was a college town or something like that. So they'll uh, figure really. out somewhere, somewhere to go. It's, somewhere. How do they, what do they say about, about uh, you know, crimes in every other instance? Well, it's a deterrent. You know, you got you know, you to gotta keep people from doing crime by making it really bad if you do the crime, you I'm know, well, okay. no so matter the crime. So my question to Starbucks so, Worker, Workers United is, how does a judge tell a private business that they have to reopen? Like, they closed the business. I think what Starbucks did is terrible. I'm not sure how making them reopen a store, rehire the same workers, and then treat them badly fixes anything. Because you know that they're not going to want to treat those workers well. How the hell? Why would you ever want to go work there for them again? I mean, to stick it to them, yes. But to be treated the way they guarantee they're going to well, treat but they're you. They're making the wins. They're making the wins because, right, that's the thing that's so inspiring right now is that often what you see, like we saw it with Amazon a bit, how some places <laughs> were able to vote in, some places weren't, but it was because there was so much inconsistency. And that's what's so inspiring yeah. about what's happening with Starbucks is that everybody's kind of holding the line there. So, I mean, right. there might just be hope is really what their the workers are saying they have. With Think of the first the day back time. at that job. Like you, you get to you get to walk in like with that, like dude, they couldn't tell me to do shit for days. Like, you know, <laughs> I'd be like, hey, "Fuck you, we won. You can't do shit. Can't tell me nothing." You know, fire me. You can't fuck you. <laughs> like cheese, you know. sandwich, cheese sandwich making a, an interesting uh, point. Starbucks on strike demanding full gay workforce. Um, not exactly, but that's a funny comment because we actually talked about that a couple weeks ago. They're on strike because Starbucks intentionally told them to take down pride gear in certain stores where it was on before. And they sort they've they've had the ability to do that and express that in the past, and they took away something they had been doing, and nobody had a problem with. Um, but I get it, yep. and and I get why people don't necessarily like that, and that's I, I I'm fine with it, really. Like, I, doesn't bother me one bit. You want <laughs> you want to wear all the rainbow stuff? My kid, my my, I got a daughter. She loves rainbows. So you want to wear rainbows? Not that everywhere? there's anything. Not that there's anything wrong I'm, with that. I'm completely yeah. fine. No, like like go 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 ahead. <laughs> live, live your life and live free. Be free. Uh, oh man. So it's okay, Costanza. It's gonna right? be all right. Not that there's You're anything wrong fine. with that. I was in the pool. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong. I was in right? the pool. So, but, um, but I still want to know how do they how, how do they tell a judge to reopen? So this guy Colin says that because the First Amendment ties into labor rights, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> if you didn't know, read up on Abraham Lincoln, for example, the relation between labor and capital. Our labor law needs to be updated. The NLRA NLRA was written in 1935, and he's saying pass the Pro Act. Also here, and he's I believe a um, yeah um, 
a union organizer also. So he would be a good person. I said, my question is, what's the penalty for noncompliance with the entire ruling at that point? Fines? I think they should have been forced to pay each of the six at least a million dollars, maybe even two. I think this might cost them more, depending on how things work out. Like, let's say that other company now decides to sue because you had terrible labor practice. That's now more money. Like you're, you know, so. So the, so KW with, with the Ukraine flag. Uh, okay. Uh, but so uh -huh. but they, can, they can keep doing it and get sued. Now, I will say that the Step Brothers reference, they're, they're Audi 5000, bro. Yeah. Like uh, that, that kind of got me a little bit. I thought that was that was kind of funny, you, despite the flag. We can we can come together over other stuff, but somebody got big mad over what I was saying, <clears throat> and this yeah. should be obvious that the store was closed in retaliation. This is what you were saying to Tommy against workers for union organizing. The reopening of the store meets workers' demands. Great, yeah. I said. Do you think that Starbucks is going to put all their full efforts into making that store a success? My guess is they'll attempt to torpedo it. No, but who cares? Well, the or, people who work. I the mean, they could end up pay, having to pay people out. I mean, also we have to keep in mind that sometimes we're why people will fight for this particular job, even though it makes it seems to make more sense to move on, is um they they might have been promised certain benefits. It might be what's really closest to them. It might be one of the better options. So getting it like rug pulled from them really meant something. So there, there's potential there, I think, even though like in the face of it, it just seems like it's just, you know, right for more abuse. There could be a reason why people are, these workers are trying to even put themselves back into that position. Yeah, that's that fair. Well, it's also the, like they may feel like the, the and the union may feel it sets a precedent anyway that oh if you're going to do this that we will use this legal bludgeon and like you might have to reopen a store you fired well, or he, worse it, well here's here's my point please name all the private businesses that the federal government has ordered a company to reopen an office and rehire the people treating them well after a bitter fight and i yeah, don't think just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it shouldn't Shouldn't, and there but, probably is instances that, that's, if, if I wasn't too lazy to go look it up. And also, so, you know, like, there is the just sticking it to them portion. Like, this can't be lucrative for them, even if, like, they do open it up and then try to hurt the workers and kneecap the workers. That's just wasting their own money and their own time, too. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't they want this business to also have money or make money at some point in the future, it being reopened? I don't know. I feel like and to it recoup would, it would, legal it, at costs. the very least, it would waste their own money and time if they yeah. do that route. All right. So this is the actual so, judgment <laughs> that, that they had. And I wanted to get down to the decision because this is where it says what the remedies were. And these people's testimonies. And then at the very end, it gives the decision. All right, so the, here's the order. Starbucks, yeah, it's all, officers, agents, and representatives shall cease and desist from discharging or otherwise discriminating against employees for engaging in union or other protected concerted activity. Can't believe that even needs to be said, but it does. Refusing to engage in decisional bargaining over store closures that can reasonably be expected to chill union activity at the other Starbucks facilities, refusing to bargain over charges to its policies and, pol and practices that have uh, cha changed since the certification of the, of the union on April 8th, 2022, including enforcement of discipline uh, and the hours of its Ithaca stores. So talking about that, it's suggesting that pro-union employees that they quit their employment if they're unhappy, they should cease and desist from all these things suggesting to their employees that it has no intention of complying with the NLRA or otherwise suggesting that organizing would be futile, which is what Starbucks has illegally been telling their employees. More strictly and consistently enforcing its rules and policies after learning of union activity, which is something that they also tend to do is clamp down on the store and send more managers there to scrutinize employees, denying leave requests due to yep. union activity, telling employees that it was closing permanently a store when no such decision had been made. Well, that's going to cause them to start looking for work unnecessarily, wouldn't it? Yes. 
So in any manner, they also need to see, cease and desist in any manner interfering with restraining or coercing employees in the exercise of the rights guaranteed to them by Section 7 of the NLRA. That's all great. Yeah, so so, this is all a cease and desist? Right. So no, here's what they shall take okay. the firm the respondent tell, shall take the following affirmative action necessary to effectuate the policies of the act. So here's what they have to do. Within 14 days of the board's of the board's order, the six employees, Benjamin South, Kaylee Gillett, Kiki Condon, Johnny Carpenter McLean, David Rasenko, and Beck McLean, full in statement to their former jobs, or if those jobs no longer exist, to substantially equivalent positions without prejudice to their seniority or other rights or privileges previously enjoyed. So they get time served back. Right. The respondent shall also make them whole for any loss of earnings and other benefits and for any other direct and foreseeable pecuniary harm suffered as a result of their unlawful discharges as provided in the remedy of the, of the discussion. That's what I'm talking about, getting them made whole for any compensate them for search for work and interim employment expenses. So this is all really good stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. So. They also need to compensate employees for adverse tax consequences, if any, for receiving a lump sum back pay award. So not only do they have to pay them the, the amount, they also have to cover the amount of tax implication difference on what their normal tax bill would be. Right? Okay. Right. Within two weeks from the board's order, remove its files, remove from its files any reference to the unlawful discharges and disciplines of those six. Within three days thereafter, oh, no, notify each charged. of them. <clears throat> oh God! Well, notify each of them individually in writing that this had been done. Right? They have to engage in bargaining over the. This is the engage in bargaining over the decision to close its College Avenue store and then reopen the College Avenue store immediately. Like when I saw that, my head exploded. I'm like, I, I, I've I've never seen that in a court ruling in my life. At least that I know of. I mean, I haven't studied law. Yeah, but I'm not how a many have you been looking? Right. I'm not like, a lawyer, but uh, uh, you know, I play one like, on TV. Uh, we, maybe we should call a labor lawyer and see if there's precedent, because I, otherwise, this wouldn't have happened. I play one on like, TV, but uh, so all, and then of course they also have to offer immediate employment to all employees who were working at the College Avenue store as of June first last year when they closed it. They have to bargain with the union at the exclusive bargaining as the exclusive bargaining representative of its, of its College Avenue employees for a period of not less than a year after the store reopens and it remedies all the unfair labor practices found herein. I mean, this is all awesome. Wow. Like literally holding them by the nuts and saying, this is what you're going to do. Um, yep. Squeezing hard. Bargain with the union as the exclusive bargaining representative of the union. Uh, unit employees at Meadow and Common Stores for a period of six months after it remedies all the unfair labor practices herein. I mean, this is all awesome stuff. Um, there we go. Roger Meadows is over on the Rockfin. He's got a $2 Super Ray. Always appreciated. Shout out to Pasta. Uh, what he's saying is the 2015 model cor uh, Corporate Charter Revocation Act Give state attorney generals the power to revoke. Here, let me move this over so you guys can see that. It gives the the state the, uh, the power to revoke. Uh, I was reading that. Re to revoke corporate charters, which is a privilege, not a right, when the corporation has established a record of egregious behavior, putting communities at risk of using workers, consumers, the environment. Uh, we need to amend that law. Uh, for passing state laws to allow AGs to reissue co-op charters in its place. Yeah, so that now the um, the workers can then own the means of, uh, of, of production and it turns into a worker-owned co-op and they then run the joint. Yep. I'm Interesting. far more for it. There was a, a union that literally through their that. win got mm -hmm. became a co-op. Yeah, yep. so somebody's listening. Yep, they did that. Know. So... So, um, um, they also have to, within 14 days, post at all its facilities, the attached notice marked appendix, right? And it tells them all the different stuff that happened in this lawsuit. And this is in every facility nationwide. They have to post this. They shall also within 14 days. All right. Um, may allow for good cause shown, blah, 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 blah. All payroll cards. They have to provide all of the back pay. Do one of the terms of this order based upon 
um, the documents and records that have been provided and what they have to be completely transparent about that. Make employees whole for losses suffered by any by reason of unlawful unilateral charges on the terms and conditions of employment. This is huge. And all these six are going to need lawyers. So they're going to have to compensate for all their legal fees. <clears throat> I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be costing Fun. it's it's still gonna be nothing for Starbucks in the end. It's still a drop in the bucket. But within yeah. 21 days, they'll show they shall fire uh, file with the regional director a sworn certification of a responsible official on a form provided by the region attesting to the steps that they've taken to comply. Now, what I want to know is what happens if they don't comply? Here's the hopefully appendix. some people go to jail. That would be that then that would be avoiding legal reprimand or whatever right something right. like that this is what needs you know? to be posted everywhere all right this is the appendix that they have to then sign and post with there's an official notice and may not be defaced by anyone for 60 consecutive days from data posting i mean it's it's mm. it's serious stuff uh, i love holding yep. them accountable um i still don't quite understand how you and i guess roger is explaining that you know, their corporate charter is at stake in the state, but that would also put every other potential Starbucks in New York state at risk. If that's coming from the state, I don't know where that that's would coming be from. ideal. Now this is, but this is coming from the national labor relations board. That's not coming from the state. Um, yeah, I believe that. Well, the, the judge in Ithaca, yeah, this is an NLRB judge. So I'm not really sure how that works. <laughs> 